What up, O'Connors? Now that the dust has settled on the Part 2 Legendary Summon, a lot of you guys have probably come to terms with your summon results, or maybe haven't even summoned altogether. What are you going to be doing between now and the next installment of Dokkan content? Because unfortunately, folks, we are not getting a Cell EZA for about a week, a little over a week from today. We are not going to be receiving an LR EZA until then, which means no Chain Battle, no Super Battle Road, none of the other stuff that comes along with that new event's arrival. So in the meantime, what could you possibly do to keep yourselves occupied? Well, other than simply Dokkaning responsibly, farming out free to plays, doing any events that you guys enjoy doing, I want to bring you guys' attention to something else that you guys should be doing right now to prepare for the next Dokkan Festival celebration. If you guys don't know, the next Dokkan Festival celebration is going to be the final one before the seven-year anniversary, and this is going to be the first Dokkan Festival celebration that dropped on JP after the seven-year anniversary, and that is the Ginyu Force Dokkan Fest. Now, the point of this isn't to try to entice you guys to summon on these banners, because at this point, given the late stage of this banner compared to the 70th anniversary, you're probably not going to be focused on this. You're instead going to be fixated on what is coming up afterwards, which I don't blame you. But there are two events that are going to be dropping with this celebration that must require your attention. The easy areas for the Team Bardock and the Ginyu Force teams. These guys are so good as free-to-plays. With their EZAs, they're even better, especially the Ginyu Force, because the Ginyu Force team will also be able to benefit from the newly acquired Ginyu Dokkan Festival. And whether or not you summon, that's totally fine. Your friends probably will, and they will have units in their friend slot for you to use to then enjoy the free-to-play Ginyu Force at 200%. And if you don't know why they're so good, we're going to talk about it. So let's just start from the top here. Let's start from the Team Bardock. Team Bardock is getting their EZAs as well. It started off as an original event for just the Bardock alone, the Grade 8 Bardock, who was not that great. He's good against Frieza, but there aren't too many events where you can fight Frieza. But now the Team Bardock EZA. Let's actually go through each and every one of them and see how good or not so good they are. I think they're all pretty good. Let me actually pull up the Team Bardock category as well. We don't have many units in the Team Bardock category. You may, are, you may be wondering why AGL Dokkan Festival Bardock isn't here. Because he's not part of Team Bardock. He's actually a non-canon character who happens outside of the main story of the Team Bardock story. So that's why he's not here, but he still leads the category because he leads low class warriors key plus four. So he is a better lead, but as far as a 200% or an easy a leader skill, we don't have one. So unfortunately, this unit has not received its rainbow status yet, nor has it received its easy a, and it's not going to be getting it during this celebration, but that's okay. At least the main core five units are going to be getting theirs. So let's see what they do. Borgos is the stunner of the group. He can attack, greatly raise attack and defense for one turn, cause supreme damage and a high chance to stun. And then he also gains an additional super attack when facing two or more enemies. Which means he is going to be potentially launching multiple supers and multiple opportunities against the same target if you're facing two or more enemies on a super battle road. This is basically ensuring that you're going to be stunning an enemy in one turn. It's not a guarantee, but you know, double opportunities for a 50% chance to proc, that's pretty good. Attack and defense plus 150, launches uh, plus additional attack and defense plus 100 when facing only one, launches additional super attack when facing two or more, high chance to perform a critical hit when in the presence of a Bardock category ally. So not only can you put more focus on additional, his critical is at 50%. That's pretty good. He could be hitting three super attacks while stunning and also performing a critical hit. Moving on here, we got Fasha. Int Fasha greatly raises defense for one turn, causes supreme damage and lowers attack and defense. Attack and defense plus 150. 50% chance to dodge, regardless. Randomly changes key spheres of a certain type to rainbow when there's an ally whose name includes Bardock. Not Team Bardock, but Bardock himself. All allies key plus three, and then Team Bardock category allies attack and defense plus 30% within the same turn after evading an attack. This one's a little bit weird because you have to dodge for the support to activate, but whatever, it is what it is. It's still cool to have. Then moving on, we've got Total Invasion Tora. He is a permanent attack and defense stacker. Raise attack and defense, cause supreme damage. Attack and defense plus 150. All allies key plus three. Attack and defense plus 30%. So he's also a support. And he provides extra critical hit boost by 10%. And he recovers 15% HP whenever HP is below 85%. That's a pretty high number. So he's going to keep you regulated and uh, pretty, pretty healthy, hopefully. And then also when he stacks enough defense, he can heal you that way as well. When in the presence of three or more low class warrior category allies. So as you can see, they all tie in very well together. We've also got the Shugesh here, raises defense, greatly raises attack for one turn, causes supreme damage, attack and defense plus 150, plus an additional attack and defense plus 50 when there's another team Bardock category ally attacking in the same turn. Performs a guaranteed critical hit when the target enemy is stunned. So if you run this guy with Borgos, they're going to work well together. Stuns the target enemy when the target enemy's attack is sealed, launches an additional attack that has a high chance of becoming a super attack when the target enemy is an attack down or defense down. So all these different conditions apply to different characters on the team. Stun is Borgos, sealed is Bardock, Attacker defense down is Fasha. 
so these guys all work extremely well together and then the final unit is the str bardock he is a nuke raise attack and defense seals attack and defense plus 20 percent per key sphere attack and defense plus 150 seven percent critical hit boost per rainbow key sphere obtained and reduces damage received by 50 percent so as you can see these guys are now here to play the only thing that they're missing is a leader skill so once once they get that they're going to be really really good but how do you do this every single day from now until the end of the week you can work on every single unit with their own designated days sunday to monday is borgos monday to tuesday is torah tuesday to wednesday asha and so on and so forth each event gives you all that you need you can farm out copies of the ssr you're going to need to have 19 copies total 14 to rainbow the base unit and then five extra so you can boost the super attack of the duplicate unit for free so that you don't have to waste any kais one horrible thing that you could do is to waste kais on these free-to-play units just weeks before the seven-year anniversary that is an absolute no-no you must not do that do not dokkan irresponsibly for this one folks please don't so you can work on this on monday so that gives you an opportunity to pace yourself if you're overwhelmed by the amount of homework or you know dokkaning that you have to do if you sparse this out on every single day you can get this done in a much easier more digestible fashion borgos is on sunday to monday same thing goes for the team ginyu force as well and once you finish that on the saturday on the weekends you can work on any sort of straggling things that you might have missed you have hidden potential taken care of in the context of the event you don't have to waste any outside hidden potential system so you can use all the stuff that you gain from here and it is absolutely worth the grind because when they get their easy A's, they're not only going to be good individually but they're going to be good together so they will hold a lot of utility on summonable and free-to-play teams let's move on to the team ginyu force event now this is the first time this event will be coming back since its debut back in august 26th of 2021 jp got this a couple of months ago global will be getting this in about one month from now and this will be the first time that new players will be able to actually pick up these easy a's you guys are missing out these units are better than the team ginyu force even though the ginyu force released later i actually like these guys a heck of a lot more so let's take a look we'll start with the goldo let's pull up raccoon we got bad we got jace and we've got ginyu let's not forget they all can function under the new 200 leader skill of the dokkan festival ginyu so let's take a look at tech rhyme style here greatly raises defense cause supreme damage with a high chance to stun attack and defense plus 80 percent plus an additional attack and defense plus 40 when he is 12. attack enemies attack and defense minus 20 percent for two turns and seals the attack enemy super attack plus an additional attack and defense plus 10 per ginyu force on the team up to 50. for a guy who doesn't boast a lot of numbers he does a lot of other things he can stun he can seal and he can nerf you all in one turn if everything goes the way that you want this guy is a very good unit on tech super battle road and he's also good on the ginyu force team as you can see next up we've got the raccoon probably the one that i have the biggest complaint with i've always talked about how i hate the fact that he has a high chance to guard but the thing is folks if this guy gains enough attack and defense with getting hit he will hit very hard greatly raise attack for one turn cause supreme damage Attack and defense plus 120, attack and defense plus 30 with each attack received up to an additional 120. That combined, he's going to be hitting very hard. And then he also has the high chance to guard, but only in the presence of another Ginyu Force category ally on the team. So if you run this guy with the Jice, that's going to be a much easier way to actually, you know, kind of figure out where's the safest place to have this guy guard and actually get hit. If you're fighting type advantage, of course, he will guard for sure. But when you're not, you make sure that you don't get hit with a super attack. So that's why you run STR Jice this guy can scout all attacks he raises defense boosts attack and defense for the allies by 20 percent and then he also provides extreme class key plus three attack plus 30 percent and he gives defense plus 40 to ginyu force category allies so this guy is a very good accompanying unit to bring on any of the other units rotations because he can pretty much keep you covered so that you know exactly what's going to be headed your way and then we've got the agl bat this one i like more because this guy has the ability to stack defense and also launch attack with a pretty uh pretty decisive number because he also gets a nuking passive attack and defense plus 20 percent per key sphere obtained this guy could probably hit pretty hard if you've got the right setup high chance to dodge enemies attacks as the first attacker in a turn additional super attack has a medium chance to proc if he's in slot two or three which is very nice you combine that with a nuking effect and you launch two defensive boosts in one turn he's not going to really take a whole lot of damage and then chance of dodging plus 20 percent on any slot when in the presence of a ginyu force ally on the team and last but certainly not least this guy right here in ginyu is ridiculously dominant raises attack permanently raises defense for one turn causes supreme damage he reduces damage received by 50 percent when facing two or more enemies and if you thought that was crazy attack and defense plus 170 he plus three plus an additional attack and defense plus 100 when facing only one enemy what 
this is a free to play unit and he is going to be boasting that much in the attack and defense department then he also disables enemy guard oh yeah by the way disables enemy guard and attack plus 50 percent when in the presence of another guinea force category ally which should be at all times imagine this guy on a 200 led team with this 200 ginyu how do you do this you run through the same exact event as you did for the team bardock sunday to monday is bad monday to tuesday is ginyu or guldo tuesday to wednesday is ginyu wednesday to thursday is jice and thursday to friday is Rakum. with the weekends being open for everything once again farm out 19 copies of these units each one pull up whatever hidden potential orbs that you need for each one they are all self-contained within the context of their event you're not wasting any outside resources for this one folks you don't have to waste any kai's you don't have to waste any hidden potential orbs and you will be given some of the best free-to-play units in the game thanks to their easy a's both team bardock and the ginyu force are must-haves on any dokkan account so make sure to take this opportunity to work on them because you've got all week we've got nothing to do from now until next week in terms of new content so for today you know what i'm going to be doing i'm going to be working on bardock and i'm going to be working on Bata because i haven't completed either guys thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed the video be sure to leave a like down below let me know in the comments which team do you like more team bardock or the ginyu force not accounting for the leader skill because we don't have a free-to-play lead for either one that has been upgraded as of yet so strictly based on the TURs themselves which team do you like more and why let me know in the comments down below also be sure to subscribe for more dope content of the future and click the notification bell so that you let youtube know you want to see more of my stuff do it thanks again stay tuned and always remember to dokkan responsibly